Everybody, this is the first uh, first lecture in the subsea pipeline uh, design uh, section. So uh, before getting into a lot of the technicals, it's uh, a good idea to get some uh, get some introduction. So pipelines and risers are used for a variety of reasons in the development of offshore hydrocarbon resources, and some of these reasons include that they can uh, pipelines can be used as a transport, transportation pipelines, which transport uh, some type of product from offshore to onshore. Or they can be used as flow lines to transfer product from a platform to export lines. They can be used as water injection or chemical injection flow lines. Or they can be used as flow lines to transfer product between platforms or subsea manifolds uh, and or subsea wells. And finally, they can be used in uh, bundles, in pipeline bundles. So the design process for each of these, uh, for each of these um, uses, is is generally the same. And so, when designing a subsea pipeline, there's um, there's uh, typically three three main stages. But each of these stages can be further divided up. But just to ke uh, keep things simplified, we'll, we say that there's three stages. And the first stage is conceptual engineering. The second stage is preliminary engineering. And the third stage is detailed engineering. So you can say a lot, a lot of times people also refer to conceptual engineering as maybe um, something like pre-feed. And preliminary engineering is uh, uh, sometimes referred to as feed. And feed is just front end engineering design. That's what it stands for. And detail engineering is just the final engineering phase. So first we'll just look at some of the activities in conceptual engineering. And some of the main objectives of conceptual engineering are to establish uh, technical feasibility and constraints on the system design and construction. So you're looking at various concepts, uh, various concepts, and seeing which ideas are real realistic and which ideas are not realistic, and also some of the main constraints that could really hinder uh, hinder the design process. Also, you're removing non-viable options, things that just you think won't work, and then you're also trying to identify any uh, different types of required information that will be required as a design process. Uh, goes moves forward and fourth you're trying to establish some type of basic cost and scheduling um, get an idea of how much this project will cost and when it will be finished and and all the design steps it will take and finally you're trying to identify interfaces uh, with other systems with other planned systems or th that are currently in existence or that plan to be in existence and then you also need to look at what types of inputs do you need from other disciplines such as flow assurance or other types of uh, disciplines. And then uh, secondly, we move on to preliminary engineering. And in preliminary engineering, you're trying to get the concept, the main concept, uh, freeze the basic concept. So that means you're verifying the sizing of the pipeline. Uh, trying to determine the pipeline grade and wall thickness. Uh, trying to uh, you're checking the pipeline against design and code requirements for a different scenarios such as installation, commissioning, and operation. And uh, you're preparing to preparing the authority applications, any type of applications that are required for the gov from the government or regulatory agencies. And finally, you're trying to get a basic idea of a material uh, takeoff, so you can order uh, such so that you can order the line pipe, especially if it's a long lead item. So once you have the preliminary engineering, uh, it's uh, you're ready for the final uh, detailed engineering phase. And the detailed engineering, the goal is to um, obviously have as less changes from the prelimin uh, from the preliminary engineering as possible and you're trying to you're trying to have all the technical input for all procurement and construction tendering so you have enough detail 
So some of the main goals of prelim, uh, detailed engineering are route optimization. So you want to have the best possible route, avoiding uh, major obstructions and things such as long spans. And you're finalizing the wall thickness and coating. And you're confirming uh, different if the pipeline meets code requirements for things such as strength, the VIV, vortex in induced vibrations, on bottom stability, global buckling, and installation. And then you're confirming if the design is sufficient or if there's any other additional design that's necessary that wasn't done in the preliminary engineering phase. F fifth, you're making sure that the development of the design and drawings is sufficient for this uh, for the scope that you've been uh, that you're working on so that may include any pipeline tie-ins crossings span corrections risers shore approaches subsea structures you have to take all that into account six year uh, the neatest uh, you have to prepare detailed alignment sheets based on the most recent survey data that is available a seventh you need to have uh, developed the specifications which cover materials, cost applications, construction activities such as pipe lay, survey, welding, riser installations, spool piece installations, subsea tie-ins, subsea structure installation, and commissioning. Seventh, you want to have a, a final material takeoff and compile necessary requisition information for the procurement of all materials. And hopefully the long lead items have already been ordered in preliminary engineering phase. And last year, preparing any other additional information that's required for certification authorities and the government agencies or regulatory agencies. And this is the end of uh, lecture number one on subsea pipelines. Thanks.